to so get back to this stainless fuel rail that I got is going to work. I have to notch it out to sit down over the mounting tabs a little bit. Use a large body washer. Found a uh, post on a Jeep forum or something. That's what the guy did, and it should work. Nice stainless returnless fuel rail. Uh, lower radiator hose that I created out of a couple of pieces and parts kicking around here. That'll work fine to go from down there to the GM thermostat housing. Uh, the Jeep starter cable should work. TCM is mounted in the Jeep TCM location on a Jeep TCM bracket. That's going to work. That's the only location for it over there. The harness has to be flopped, obviously, in the truck. It was all over here, the computer and shit. So it's all going to be moved over here. But there's my harness all ready to lay in. So that's good. Parts, pieces, extra rails, shit that I don't need, that I may need. Uh, Jeep V8 radiator is going to work. We're a little tight here, but everything is in. Plenty of clearances there. I probably would have liked to push the engine back another inch, but I'm really not sure if I have room with exhaust pipes. But I think I might. I still may be able to. I just got to actually uh, either remake or modify the engine mounts that I made just to push the motor back an inch. It's not even that big of a deal. It won't even affect my drive shaft length, really. Uh, the string was just to get a rough idea, but really it's got to be up like this. So that should be fine. Coil packs and shit, that's all good. Everything's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's hard to see now. Because I got the radiator in. is just about dead nuts where the Jeep one is. In fact, I have 30 in, uh, 33 inches from center to center of yokes. <coughs> and the drive shaft is out of a V8 with a 247 transfer case is 33 inches. So that's going to work dead nuts. Might be hard to see. I modified the cross member utilizing part of the GM one welded to the Jeep cross member and uh, transmission's dead nuts. I can still slide that back a little bit on the slots so if I needed to I could. Let's go in here a little more. There's the transmission cable, shift cable bracket that I made. Uh, this piece was the GM, uh, GM, was the Jeep cable. I flattened it out and it bolted into that bolt hole right here. I just made another tab. That's pretty solid. Uh, the problem is when you shift, this piece flexes up so it doesn't give it enough throw to put it back in part. I can get it down and into gear and through the gears, um, but it won't go into part. So I need to make another bracket or something that holds this piece down so that when it shifts, it doesn't flex. Uh, I have Heim, little mini Heim joints and uh, I've got adjustable rod. I just stuck this flat stock in there just to connect the two points. Just to test. Uh, yeah, see, I'm pretty sure that's a 516th line off the Jeep. That needs to be modified so that it's uh, the GM line can go on there, or 
maybe I'll just run braided hose from there up to the rail. I, I, I don't really know yet. I'm not that worried about it. I got the exhaust pipe down here to connect the Y pipe to. I have the other exhaust pipe over here. So now those can just, I can build the Y pipe. But I consider that the easy part compared to getting the headers in and the down pipes past the motor and the frame rails and shit. Uh, and the cool thing is, I mean, I've had to cut nothing on the Jeep. There's been no cutting, no plating, no major anything. Uh, I haven't had to smash nothing with the hammer for clearance. Everything's worked out pretty good. Uh, yeah, I really can't complain. Um, it's going in rather nicely. So, this thing's still filthy. But, uh, yeah, and there's plenty of room up in this tunnel. Uh, transmission tunnel. I'm pretty sure a uh, ADE will fit in there, which, you know, obviously everybody needs to upgrade to the 80s eventually. I got a MP261 GM transfer case, uh, manual shift, speed sensors located right there though, so uh, this should suit my purposes fine. I suspect we're going to blow up the rear end first, anyway. <laughs> oh, so that's that. But yeah, all in all, we should be good. I have just enough hood clearance to clear alternator, truck intake with no modifications. Which is good because the engine couldn't even drop. I couldn't lower the engine at all. I could slide it back a little bit, but it hits, like right where the map sensor on the truck intake is, hits right here on the cowl, and I couldn't get a swing with the hammer uh, to really dent that at all. It's not a big deal to me. Everything's good. So, realistically, that thing is going to go in. Uh, we're getting close. I just need to hook up. Well, let's see. I got right. I got cooling hoses pretty much figured out today. Tranny lines should be pretty easy. Fuel lines going to be a little bit of a bitch. Uh, I'd like to. I got to order a couple of adapters or some pieces. I just really haven't sat down and figured it out. Uh, I get the, using the GM truck throttle cable. It's a little tight. I would like it to be about maybe two inches longer would be nice, but it is what it is. Uh, it will work. Like I said, PCM's in, so that was a huge step. It's right where I wanted it. That was my initial idea, was to put it there, and it's going to work. It's really tight down here with the shock mount. So, But there's enough clearance there. If the shock moved or something, it's not going to hit the, the uh, LS computer. So we're solid there. Uh, all in all, Everything's going really well. Uh, it's just like this thing wants to be LS swapped, so it's cooperating, which is nice. Uh, the plan is, is maybe I'll have EVAP stuff hooked up eventually, so I'm leaving all the Jeep stuff here. I have the GM stuff, and really it's not hard to get replacement parts. They're all over the junkyard. So I would like to hook the EVAP stuff up eventually, just because, just because. And let's see, what else do we have? Oh, the starter. Uh, the GM starter. The, the damn uh, stud broke when I was taking the signal wire off. I got like a thread, thread and a half on there. This is a Jeep plug-in terminal, so I should be able to hook the Jeep starter circuit up. Right to the GM starter, no problem. I'm going to solder that shit all together so it's real good and it's got a good solid connection. But I'm not worried about it right now. Minor. That starter's seen better days anyway. And transmission line, intake, injectors. Uh, I guess I ended up, let's see, the truck injectors I have, 
I think I looked them up and they were 22 pound hour and I got some from the junkyard on this rail. These are 24s. So I got the uh, truck O2 sensors out of the truck Y pipe and they're going to fit right in. I got I got uh, the sensor on the passenger side. There's plenty of room. I don't know if you can see it, but there's an O2 sensor down there on the driver's side. That should work. The plan is for the wiring harness to come. What I'm going to try to do is pull it out, wrap it down and around back along the firewall coming in here and then it'll split and go down to the transmission I'll get the transmission plugs will go that way all of the intake and injectors will come up this way uh, while injectors and coil packs will travel up along the side of the intake knock sensors, alternator, throttle position, IAC, all that shit will come under the intake and up so most of the wires will be hidden all of the grounds, the three engine grounds, instead of being one one here, one there, and one in the front of the block, they'll all be in the back, on the back of the head, just one one bolt, all three grounds. That would be really hard to fuck up. Uh, otherwise, everything on the Jeep should work. Um, the GM power steering pump is going to work just fine. The line threads right in there. Boom. I do have a power steering cooler though. Uh, the Jeep one and uh, a truck one. But the Jeep one bolts in right here so I'm just going to use the Jeep power steering cooler. And hopefully that will return back to the GM pump without getting in the way of the power steering pulley at all. And I think that's good and lined up but I might have to push that pulley on you know another eighth of an inch or something. I'm not really sure. We'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. So, headers are good. I can access all the plugs, plug wires. Uh, back here, I had to ding cruise control. My idea is hopefully to hook the cruise control up someday, though it's not a top priority. I had to ding this part, the rear primary tube, to get the plug boot on the plug. And really, I'll probably have to pull the header in order to change that plug. But, um, you know, what do you got to do? It's a rarity. And really, the headers come off easy. There's plenty of room. There's no major hassles to getting them on and off. I got V-bands coming. I ordered V-bands, uh, a U-joint, uh, just a bunch of stuff. I'm waiting on a few parts. So... But yeah, there she is, and there she goes, and there she be, and hopefully this thing's going to be nasty. Once it's up and running and driving and everything's functional, uh, then we'll get into camshaft, valve springs, and um, mock up a hot side and a cold side for a turbo. I don't know where it's going to fit is the problem. There's really... Not a lot of space in here for a turbo. You know, there's just not. It'll have to be on the driver's side, probably. You know, I've got a big empty hull here that's just an air cleaner box on the Jeep, which I don't know how I'm going to get air in this thing yet. As you figure from the truck intake, running the intake tube one direction or another is just, yeah, it's going to be really tough. Maybe what would be cool is like uh, uh, TA WS6 package, use the hood air intakes and maybe direct it right into the throttle body or something for now. I'm not, you know. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, I guess. Get her in and running. That's the big thing. Then go do some burnouts. Cool.